Patient-generated outcome measures quantify issues of importance to the patient. There are several examples of this in the psychological literature, and in this literature they're known as ideographic measures. Examples include the PQ, Personal Questionnaire, or the GAS, Goal Attainment Scale. Use of these instruments, though, has been hampered by their length, their complexity, and the requirement to have interviewers help the patient to complete the measure. In mental health, in the field of primary care mental health, commonly used measures include CORE, OM, HADS, GHQ, BDI, and others. These self-completed uh, outcome measures allow patients to participate in measuring outcomes. But are these the outcomes that matter to patients? The problem with the, these conventional measures is that they consist of a checklist of symptoms, they're expert derived, usually from a consensus of experts selecting a series of questions from a larger pool, and many of the eventual questions that end up in the questionnaire have little personal significance or meaning to the patients concerned. Cyclops is different. It comes from a different starting point. Its starting point is the problems or concerns that matter to the patient. It begins with a simple question, choose the problem that troubles you most. Please write it in the box below, and the patient then writes a description of their, of their problem and scores it. It then goes on, on to ask question number two, a second problem, write in the box below, score that. The third question is, in the functioning domain, tell us one thing that's hard to do as a result of your problem. Question number four is in the well-being domain, how have you felt in the last week? That's it. So what are its psychometric properties? Well. Its strongest psychometric property is its responsiveness to change. Responsiveness to change is normally measured using the effect size, and the effect size is about 50% greater than conventional measures at around 1.6. Uh, its test retestability and its internal consistency are also satisfactory, but it has one drawback. And the drawback is this, that there is no such thing as a population norm, and that is because each questionnaire is measuring something unique. You can't compare the score of one patient completing Cyclops with that of another patient completing Cyclops. They're measuring different things. So, its main use is as a measure of change. You compare the pre-therapy Cyclops with the during-therapy Cyclops, and with the end of the therapy cyclops. It's that measure of change which is probably its strongest point, and that's where it is more responsive to change than other measures. So should you be using cyclops? Um, probably yes, if you run a service and you are working with people, changing people's lives, and you want to be able to prove that you're doing something good through your talking therapy, cyclops is the one that's most likely to show the change. Probably yes, you should be using it if you're a researcher and you want to capture outcomes of importance to patients, possibly even outcomes that are missed by conventional measures. The other big reason for using it is, of course, of all the measures, it is probably the most user-centred of all the measures out there. And finally, on the screen behind me, here is a picture of what Cyclops, at least page one, the pre-therapy version, looks like. Thank you very much.